is that in case of voltage divider bias, in place of VCC you have VTH and in place of RV you have RTH. So that is the difference. Rest all remains the same. So uh, you can you know now easily apply KVL on the input side to find uh, IV. Similarly, you can apply KVL on the output side to find IC. Okay, so let us quickly apply um, the KVL and let us see uh, what relation we are going to get. Okay, all right. So we'll mention the transistor currents IB, IE. So all the blue ones are basically uh, currents. Okay. So this should not take much time because the analysis pretty much similar to the emitter bias. So first I will write apply KVL on base emitter loop. So let us start from VTH, VTH minus IB into RTH minus VBE minus IE into RE is equal to 0. So we have IE is equal to IC plus IB which is equal to IB plus IC is beta times IB beta times IB. So uh, effectively you can substitute in place of IE 1 plus beta times IB right. So in place of IE you can substitute 1 plus beta times IB. So with that substitution you will get VTH minus VBE minus IB into RTH plus okay you have IE right and what is IE? IE is 1 plus beta times IB into RE. So IB we have taken out. So the resistor product looks something like this RE into 1 plus beta is equal to 0. And if you rearrange the terms uh, you will be get the base current expression. So IB is equal to difference in potential that is VTH minus VB divided by total resistance RTH plus 1 plus beta times R E. Okay. So as I said, um, in case of uh, emitter bias, you would have got VCC here and you would have got R B here. Okay, so yellow is for emitter bias. Okay, so this is the difference. You see, rest all remains the same. So once you know um, IB, you can find IC. So therefore, IC is equal to beta times IB. So this will give you ICQ as well. So this also you can consider with a, consider it as IBQ. So that's how you calculate IBQ. Okay. So moving forward, uh, you can apply KVL on the output circuit. So apply KVL on the output circuit. Right. So what do we have on the output circuit? We have VCC collector resistor terminal voltage VCE and emitter resistor, right? So applying KVL gives um, the expression something like this, VCC minus um, ICRC minus VCE minus IARE is equal to zero. And we know that IC is approximately equals to IE why? Due to the fact that base current is very much small in comparison with IC and IE. So this leads to you know the following approximation. So you would get VCC minus VCE minus IC times RC plus RE. Okay. 
or the quiescent value of Vc can be given as Vce is equal to Vcc minus this potential drop Rc plus R. This can be considered as Vce q. So you have found the coordinates of the q point or the quiescent point. What is it? Vc q and Vc q. So this is your x coordinate and this is your y coordinate. And if you inspect this output equation. So this is your output equation. Output equation. So you can draw a very strong conclusion that the output expression is the same, right? The output expression is the same for the following biasing networks. So what are the biasing networks? Emitter bias Then collector feedback bias and then voltage divider bias. Voltage divider bias, and that's why the load line construction remains the same. The values need not be the same because every biasing network will have different uh, collector, emitter and uh, you know base resistance values. So the formula remains the same. Okay, the values need not be the same but the formula remains the same. So this being IC, this being VCE. So you are IC saturation for the three biasing network going to be IC sat is equal to VCC by RC plus R. Right. Obviously, right. When the output expression is same, obviously this, uh, you know, Y intercept point is going to be the same. And your VCE saturation is going to be VCC. You know, that's how you can compare the three biasing networks only on the input side there are some changes okay you have in some place only re in some place you have rc plus re in some place you have rdh okay probably in the coming sessions uh, we will discuss about um, something known as the bias stability okay so let us solve some problems based on biasing networks okay so for example problem number one um, for the following specification, let us determine the following. So given R1 is equal to 47 kilo ohm, R2 is equal to 10 kilo ohm, RC is equal to 2.2 kilo ohm, RE is equal to 47 kilo ohm, VCC is equal to 10 volts. Vb is equal to 0.7 volt. So determine, determine the Q point variation. Determine the Q point variation when when the beta value, the beta value is changed from 100 to 200. So as you can see, there is R1 and R2. So obviously, it's a voltage divider by a circuit. So you're being given with all the resistance values, the power supply voltage, the type of the transistor. So VB, VB is equal to 0.7 volts. So that's a silicon transistor. And you've been asked to find the coordinates of the Q point. So what are the coordinates of Q point? ICQ and VCQ. Uh, for 
the following beta value. So you need to determine a Q point for beta equal to 100 and you also have to determine the Q point for beta equal to 200. So this is basically called as delta beta variation. So what we have to do is we need to solve this problem using this approach, case 1. So in case 1 uh, is when the beta value is set as beta 1 is equal to 100. So with beta equal to 100, what will be the coordinates of Q point? And when beta changes to 200, what will happen to the Q point? Okay. So why the beta changes? I'll tell you uh, maybe at the end of this uh, problem. Okay. So first we will determine RTH. So we have already seen that RTH is equal to R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay. So R1 is 47 into 10 to the power 3 into divided by 47 into 10 to the power 3 plus 10 into 10 to the power 3. So that will give you RTH. So RTH is equal to 8.2456. Okay, keep some two to three to four digits after the decimal point for accuracy. That's because in analog electronics the current levels are quite low. So the currents they flow in the range of milliamps in case of IE and IC and microamps in case of IB. So for better accuracy maintain at least three to four digits after the decimal point. So that will be RTH. Okay. So next you find VTH. VTH is nothing but evidence voltage source. So VTH is equal to VCC into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So VCC power supply voltage is given as 10 into R2. R2 is 10 into 10 to the power 3 divided by R1 plus R2. So it is 10 into 10 to the power 3 plus 47 into 10 to the power 3. VTH is equal to it's 1.754 volts. 1.754 volts. So once VTH and RTH is determined, you can uh, proceed to find the Q point coordinates. So first of all, you need IB. So what's the formula for IB? VTH minus VD divided by RTH plus 1 plus beta into R. So this is equal to VTH. VTH is 1.754. Minus VBE 0 0.7 divided by RTH. So RTH is 8.2456 plus 1 plus beta. So here beta is beta 1. Right. So when the beta value is 100, what's the value of IB, IC, and VCQ? That's what we are we are supposed to find out. So it is 1 plus 100 into R. So RE is 470. Okay, so let's find out what is IB. So IB is about 18.924 microamperes. All right, so once we uh, find IB, um, you will be able to find IC. So therefore, IC is equal to beta times IB. So it is 100 into 18.924 micro. So I think it is about 1.89 milli. It is 1.892 milli ICQ1. And this you can consider it as IBQ. Okay, once you find ICQ1, you can find VCE. Q1, so which is 
nothing but VCC minus IC or ICQ1 into RC plus RE. So that's 10 minus ICQ1. ICQ1 is 1.892 milli into RC plus RE. RC is 2.2 K, that is 2.2 into 10 to the power 3 plus 470. So you get VCQ1 is equal to 4.94 So whatever calculation you have done it is for beta equal to 100 all right so now let us redo recalculate ib ic and vc for beta equal to 200 we shall call this as k is b where beta is equal to beta 2 is equal to 200 now what causes the beta to change okay so beta can change intentionally or unintentionally okay so let's say for example you use a particular transistor let's say some npn transistor okay and every transistor will have certain current gain say beta right let's say the original transistor had an average current gain of say 100 and because of some reason let's say this transistor is not working so what you have to do is you have to replace the faulty transistor with a new transistor right now when you replace the faulty transistor with the new transistor you have to pay attention to new transistors beta value as well if you don't pay attention to new transistors beta value then what will happen is there can be change in beta for example let's say circuit a certain circuit had some faulty transistor and let's say that transistor is not uh, working properly and let's say I just go to some open market and buy some NPN transistor and I replace it with a fresh transistor right so due to which what may happen is that the fresh transistor may have beta value which may not be agreeing with the previous beta value so this leads to change in beta which is called as delta beta and as you know that beta is dictating um, the uh, Q point values, right? Because Q point IC is directly proportional to beta, right? So if this beta changes, obviously the collector current changes, and if the collector current changes, obviously the collector to emitter voltage changes because VC is nothing but VCC minus IC into RC plus I, right? So if beta changes if beta increases obviously collector current increases if collector current increases then this vc value may reduce so, and this is called as drift in q point so drift in q point can happen due to beta value a change in beta value so this is one way of looking at the thing sometimes uh, the beta may change with respect to temperature so it is observed that as temperature increases beta value increases so linearly uh, if the temperature is to rise then the beta value will increase linearly so this may uh, lead to uh, you know change in beta value and that's why you know all these uh, semiconductor devices for example it could be the cpu or it could be um, you know the dc power supplies okay they have uh, kind of uh, you know cooling mechanisms in the form of either heat sinks or fans right so in cpu you have cpu fan and in case of you know the power supplies or amplifiers you have something known as heat sinks so these heat sinks basically enhance uh, the surface area of the device and thereby uh, you know reducing the pallet temperature and by reducing the pallet temperature you can make sure that uh, the device is operating satisfactorily for the uh, set conditions all right so let's see uh, what will happen to uh, the bias point details if beta value is changed okay so vth and rth remains the same so we will have to recalculate
bias point details. If you look at IB, right? If you look at IB, in case of voltage divided by a circuit, IB is dependent on beta as well. So when you increase the value of beta, here you can see, when you increase the value of beta, obviously the denominator term increases. When the denominator term increases, the base current is going to decrease. So in case of voltage divider bias, when there is any increment in beta value, the base current is going to decrease. Let us see whether it is happening or not. So, IBQ set to, because here we are taking beta is equal to, beta 2 is equal to 200. Okay. So, formula remains the same. VTH minus VB divided by RTH plus 1 plus beta 2 into R okay, is equal to so VTH value. So for the new beta value, the base current is about 10.26 microamperes. Okay, earlier it was about 19 microamperes. Now with the increment in beta, the base current has reduced to 10.26 microamperes. So let's see what effect it has on the collector current. Okay, so therefore IC Q2 is equal to beta 2 into IB Q2. So it is 200 with 10. Point 6 micro micro is 10 to the power minus 6 so it is about 2.05 milliampere okay. against 1.89 milliampere the previous q point collector uh, quiescent value was 1.89 milliampere now it is 2.05 milliampere so you can see that even if the beta value is doubled, you can say that the collector current value has barely changed. So that's why we call it as a very good biasing network, very good compensation effect it has. Now you can calculate um, VCQ2. So VCQ2 is the present value for VCE for beta is equal to 200. So it is VCC minus ICQ2 into Rc plus R, so which is equal to 4.52 volts. All right, we can do a comparison. Let us say beta 1 and let us take beta 2. So beta 1 is 100 and beta 2 is 200. Okay, so for beta 1 and beta 2, we can start listing the base current collector current and emitter to collector to emitter voltage okay so beta 2 results are readily available so we will fill the beta 2 particulars first okay so current is 2.05 and the voltage is 4.52 and the base current is 2. Point, I think 20.5 microamperes Sorry, 10.26 microamperes. Microamperes. Now let us visit beta 1 calculation. Okay, so in beta 1 calculation, okay, so VCEQ we have obtained 4.9471 and IC is about, I remember, 1.89 milliampere and IB is about 18.9 microampere microampere okay so now what you can do is you can calculate something known as change in collector current and change in emitter collector to emitter voltage so delta IC so delta IC if you were to calculate okay so let's say 
difference of IC2 minus IC1. So it is 2.05 minus 1.89. So the difference is 0 0.16 milliamperes. On the other hand, the delta VCE, okay, whichever is greater, I'm considering it. Okay, so I'm taking VCE1. Okay, so be it. 2 minus 1. So it is 4.52 minus 4.947. So that's minus 0 0.42. On the other hand, delta IB, let's say IB2 minus IB1. Alright, so the comparison table is right in front of you. So what we can understand from this table is that when the beta value is doubled, when the beta value is doubled, that is from 100 to 200, what has happened is the base current has reduced drastically, right? So from 18.9 microamperes, the base current has reduced to just 10.26 microamperes, right? So that means to say there is a reduction of 8.64 microamperes. So around 80% reduction in base current is observed. And due to this reduced base current, you can see that the collector current has barely changed. The collector current is changed by just 0.16 milliamperes. Similarly, the collector emitter voltage is changed by just 0.427 milliamperes. So this variation in IC and VC can be regarded as minimal or negligible change. And that's why you can call a voltage divider bias circuit as a uh, very, uh, you know, uh, stable biasing circuit. Okay. So you can locate the Q point on the load line basically. Then you will understand the variation. So this is IC and this is VCE. So we want um, IC saturation. IC saturation is VCC divided by RC plus RE, right? And then you need VCE saturation. So VCE saturation is nothing but VCC is equal to 10 volts. So let us say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this is VCE. Saturation. Let's calculate IC saturation. VCC that is 10, 10 divided by RC. RC is 2200 ohm plus RE 470 ohm. So that is 3.74 milliampere. So suppose say this is 1. 2, 3, 4. So we are expressing current in milliamperes and voltage in volts. So this is VCE, sorry. Yeah. So look at IC saturation, so 3.74. So 3.74 is somewhere here. Okay, so this is your IC saturation. And then you join the two. So this gives the load line. Load line. And now you can place the Q points. Okay, first let us place the first Q point. Um, so first Q point is at two point sorry, one point eight nine. So one point eight nine let us locate. So somewhere here. And the second Q point. You can locate by tracing the current. So 2.05 is same. Slightly above 2. And with a proper scale, you'll be able to locate these two points clearly. So 
So this is a symbolic uh, representation. So you can see that you know Q1 and Q2 are getting traced almost at the center of the load line and the distance between Q1 and Q2 is minimal. So distance can also be called as drift. So we can draw the conclusion stating that drift is minimal. Drift is minimal. And that's why we say uh, a voltage divider bias circuit is the uh, you know the most stable biasing circuit. Okay, even though the beta value is doubled, you can see that the Q point is barely moving its moving from its original value. So original value is Q1 and Q2 is the uh, you know new value, right? So that's why it's a most stable biasing circuit. So that concludes today's session.